met as a staff, we've decided that we're going to start Duck this week. And uh, really, the, the, the decision uh, is clear for us and, and some really clear reasons why. Uh, like I talked about after the game, I thought he provided us a spark uh, in game. I'm hopeful that he's capable of continuing to provide that spark as we step into this stadium. Welcome to Steelers Live. I'm Bob Labriola here with you for the Tomlin Tuesday edition. Uh, the big news today, as you just heard, Steelers coach Mike Tomlin uh, announced the decision to start Devlin Hodges on Sunday uh, in the re critical AFC North rematch against the Cleveland Browns. Um, you know, one of the reasons why Mike Tomlin made this decision was because Mason Rudolph has thrown nine interceptions this entire season, but five of them have come in the last six quarters. I got a lot of patience for young guys, uh, but one thing that we need to do is take care of the ball. And so um, those are one of the reasons why um, we gave De Devlin an opportunity in Cincy. Uh, once given that opportunity, he took care of the ball and provided a spark. So we just thought it was reasonable as we prepare this week uh, to allow him to continue to do that. Uh, it means nothing about our intended plans uh, for, the, for the foreseeable future or the trajectory of Mason's career or what have you. Uh, we're just not of that mentality. We're not in a position to be uh, of that mentality. We're, we're putting pieces together on a week-by-week -week basis because of the adversity that the game presents, uh, with players being available to us or not available to us. And so uh, we're singularly focused on winning this game or putting ourselves in position to win this game. As Mike Tomlin just explained, this decision is a week-by-week -week basis. And now uh, this will be Devlin Hodges' second uh, career NFL start, the first coming in the Steelers game in Los Angeles against the Chargers. When Mike Tomlin was asked about Devlin Hodges' performance in that game, uh, he said the best thing about it was he didn't kill us. You know, there's not enough plays on his resume to paint with a broad brush in the ways that, 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 that you suggest. Um, there's going to be enough pressure on, on Devlin just performing. Uh, so I'm not going to add to it by talking expectations. I expect him to not kill us. Another highlight of the weekly Mike Tomlin news conference is his assessment of the team's injury situation coming out of the previous game and heading into the next game. And while you see some pretty significant names on the screen right there, Mike Tomlin didn't have a lot of detailed information about those players' status for the upcoming game against the Browns. Uh, the only in-game injury that he referred to was a bone bruise for T.J. Watt, but he explained that Watt was able to go back in and finish the game, so that's usually a positive sign. Uh, the three significant situations potentially uh, rest with the guys who were unable to play uh, against the Bengals, those being Juju Smith-Schuster with a knee injury, James Conner with a shoulder injury, and Artie Burns with a knee injury. Uh, Mike Tomlin said he didn't have a lot of clarity on those three guys' situation heading into the uh, preparation phase of this week. But as we know, practice starts for the team tomorrow here at the UPMC Rooney Sports Complex. And their av availability on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday usually tells the tale in terms of whether they will be able to play on Sunday. Another thing Mike Tomlin talked about at his news conference was how the Steelers, this particular group of Steelers, relishes being involved in the kind of game that it's going to be Sunday against the Browns. It's going to be physical. It's going to be intense. It's going to be an AFC North rivalry. As Mike Tomlin said, we don't run from these matchups. We run to these matchups. We're not a group that runs from these type of games. We're the type of group that runs to these type of games. Uh, we view it as an honor. To, to, to be the consistent team in these battles, man. We've had some battles with the Ravens over the years. That's kind of been the signature matchup in the North. We've had some battles with Cincinnati over the years, uh, which grew to be kind of a signature matchup in the North. And maybe um, the same thing's happening with this. Um, we don't know, nor do we care. We just want to be a part of it, whatever it is, uh, because this is a competitor's game and a competitor's league. Another bit of news to share with you all today, uh, the Hall of Fame released its list of 15 finalists for induction as part of the class of 2020. Three Steelers are a part of that. Those three would be Alan Fanica, who has been a finalist for the past few years now, Heinz Ward, the Steelers' all-time leading receiver, and Troy Polamalu, who is in his first year uh, of eligibility. The next phase in this process is the cut down to 15 finalists. That happens on January the 2nd.
Okay, that's going to do it for this edition of Steelers Live. Missy will be back with you tomorrow, Wednesday, which is the first day of practice for the Steelers to get ready for that intense, expectedly heated game against the Cleveland Browns.